You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down the threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems and protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. The reason I started this research is that back in March of this year, we started seeing a lot of activity from this new group at the time called 8Base. That's Guilherme Venere, a threat researcher with Cisco Talos. Today we're discussing a deep dive into Phobos ransomware recently deployed by 8Base Group. It was a group that uh, hasn't been seen before uh, in terms of ransomware. And when I started analyzing the, the incidents and look at the, at the malware that was being used in the eight base attacks, I noticed that it has a lot of similarities to Phobos. And then I started uh, diving into the, the campaign and the similarities that eight base and Phobos had to understand how much it was similar to previous Phobos uh, campaigns, right? Phobos is a pretty old malware. Uh, it's used by a lot of different uh, actors. So I want to understand what 8Base was doing differently from these other campaigns. Well, let's dig into Phobos itself, I suppose, as an introduction, uh, maybe a, a little brief explainer here. Uh, how does Phobos work and, and what are its capabilities? Yes, Phobos is, uh, like I said, it's a pretty old uh, piece of malware. Uh, it was first developed in 2018, 2019, based on a leak of another ransomware called Dharma Crisis. Uh, at the time, the, the code for Dharma Crisis was leaked in some forums. Someone took this code and developed a new malware that they called Phobos. Since then, uh, and this is part of our research, there was no new developments in, in, in Phobos in terms of code. There was no new improvements in the code itself. So when we saw the, the events uh, caused by 8Base, I wanted to understand why they were so successful and so active using a piece of malware that in theory should have been detected by everybody. And that's uh, a part of the first research where we try to understand how 8Base uh, it was using Phobos in their campaigns. Well, let's dig into that specifically. What, what, what did you find there? The first thing that I noticed is that the samples that uh, 8Base was using, the, the malware that 8Base was using to, to infect the machines and, and encrypt the machines, uh, was actually bigger in terms of size than a common Phobos uh, binary. Uh, when I look at the samples, I noticed that they were very obfuscated, uh, which means that the code in the in the file itself was uh, very different from the original Phobos uh, code. And I noticed that they were using a piece of uh, software called a loader, which is another malware that uh, is used to load different uh, payloads, right, into, into the user's machine. This malware is called Smoke Loader. And it's heavily obfuscated. The code is very difficult and very uh, it mutates a lot. So it's uh, very difficult to analyze. 8Base was using this loader uh, to drop the 8Base, the, the Ronsor Phobos on the machine of the infected victims. 
Is it fair to call what Eight Base is using Phobos? I mean, is it close enough to the original that that it's still the same thing? Yes. Uh, once we peel this this layer of obfuscation added by Smoke Loader, the final uh, ransomware binary inside the, the loader is exactly the same as any other Phobos campaign that we observed in the past uh, five years, basically. So the, the first blog that we publish, the deep dive into Phobos ransomware, actually has an analysis of the code of faith-based samples compared to previous variants of Phobos found in the last five years. So I compared with samples from 2019, 2020, 2022, and noticed that the code didn't change at all in all of these cases. Uh, only the original samples from 2019 were a little different, but after that, they were exactly the same code. The only difference in terms of uh, content was the configuration file that we found inside the samples, the configuration data that we found inside the samples. This configuration data, it's what changes between one sample and the other. So for each campaign, each thread actor uh, that we observed using Phobos, this configuration is the only change that uh, exists in these files. Hmm. Well, let's dig into Phobos's capabilities here. What can it do? Phobos is a common ransomware capable of encrypting uh, files on a user's machine. So in order to do that, it has two methods of encryption. One is for files of small size, less than 1.3 megabytes, where it encrypts the entire file. Uh, the encryption happens by creating a random encryption key called an AES key uh, for each file that is encrypted. This random AES key is then uh, added to the end of the file and along with some metadata about that file, for example, the name of the, or the original name of the file, original size, things like that. And this data at the end of the file is encrypted with an RSA key. That's a, that RSA key is what is used to decrypt the file later if the user paid the ransom, right? So that's uh, the first method. The second method is in case the file is big. In order to, to make the encryption faster, uh, Phobos don't encrypt the entire file, and decrypt parts of the file. So random blocks inside the file will be encrypted. And again, the metadata and the key used to encrypt that file will be saved at the end of the, the file with encrypted with RSA key. One thing that we notice in all Phobos variants that we analyze is that this RSA key that is used there uh, is the same for all the samples which means that there is on one single private key that is able to decrypt all these infections, all these this encrypted files. Besides this uh, ransomware encryption feature, uh, Phobos is capable of uh, encrypting uh, files on remote shares. It also contains code to elevate its privileges in case the sample is running, the file is running, as a restricted user. And it has other common features like uh, adding itself to a run key, add itself to the startup menu so it can restart the infection once the user reboots the machine. The start of the year is a great time to take that next step in your education, career, and beyond. Rely on N2K certification prep to provide the tools to help boost knowledge, skills, and confidence to get you there. And now for a limited time, all N2K certification practice tests are 40% off. Visit n2k.com slash certify and use promo code N2KVDAY. That's N2KVDAY to save 40% on your purchase. That's n2k.com slash certify with promo code N2KVDAY. Offer ends Monday, February 19th. Happy learning. And now a word from our sponsor, Six Sense. Six Sense provides award-winning cloud-based automated endpoint and vulnerability management solutions to streamline IT and security operations. 
With its advanced platform, businesses gain complete visibility and control over their infrastructure, reducing IT and security risks, and optimizing operational efficiency. With Sixth Sense, you'll get real-time alerts, risk-based vulnerability prioritization and remediations, and an intuitive automation and orchestration engine so you can focus on your core business goals, confident in the knowledge that your enterprise is secure, compliant, and running smoothly. Visit SixthSense.com to learn why enterprises choose them. What can you tell us in terms of command and control? Yeah, Phobos don't have a, a typical command and control uh, structure. Uh, it doesn't, in theory, it doesn't report the infection to a central authority. Although one piece of code that we found in our analysis was called to do exactly that, but we never found a sample that actually used this feature. So the, the, the code itself has the feature to report to a central authority, but there is no sample where this feature is enabled, right? So the, the, the method by how the user contact the ransom uh, actors, the ransomware actors, is by contacting them through an email or Telegram channel, hmm. right? So this is uh, this is uh, something that is is common in, in ransomware. Uh, although there are some ransomware that use a command control uh, feature, Phobos itself don't have this ability. It doesn't receive commands from the from a central server. It doesn't report infections back. It just encrypts the files and uh, let the user contact the, the actors. This group, 8Base, how do you rank their sophistication here? I mean, it, it sounds to me like they're reusing Phobos, but, but in addition, there is this layer of obfuscation that they put over top of it. What, what's your insight there? Yeah, the one thing that they stand out in our research is that the, the attacks themselves are not very complex. They use uh, Phobos, which is a very common piece of software. Smoke Loader is also a very common obfuscator that is used by many, many malware families. The method of infecting a victim's network, according to, to other research in, into 8Base, is basically uh, buying uh, credentials from data leaks and using the usernames and passwords that they find to connect to the remote machines using RDP. So they basically uh, connect to remote RDP servers and enter the, the victim's network by these uh, compromised accounts. Once inside the network, they attempt to access important servers inside this network. So we noticed that the base uh, likes to target ESXi servers. So servers that are running a lot of VMs and they encrypt the server itself. So that would have a bigger impact on the on the victim uh, than just in, in, in encrypting like desktops or user machines. In terms of uh, complexity, their attacks are not very complex, but they are very effective because they use things that people usually don't take care. For example, reusing credentials or credentials that have been leaked are not uh, reset and, and, and things like that. So they are very effective in using these common uh, methods of uh, infecting a victim to, to get access to their network. You also dig into the Phobos affiliate structure and the activity that you've been keeping an eye on there. Um, what can you share with us about that? Yeah, one of the, the takes from the analysis that we did on the configuration of Phobos is that inside the configuration, there is a lot of information about the groups that use Phobos. So the configuration have uh, items like the extension that is used, which includes an email that is used to contact the, the threat actors, includes the extension that is used to encrypt the file, which is usually the name of the group that is behind it. And it contains a specific item that is a list of extensions that should be avoided by the ransomware. So when the ransomware uh, finds a file with that uh, extension in that list, it won't encrypt that file. 
And that list contained a list of um, extensions related to other groups using Phobos. So, for example, the eight base samples had a list of about 20 or, or 30 uh, extensions from other groups that used Phobos before. That sample should not encrypt. And that's what gave us uh, a good overview of how many groups are using Phobos by analyzing around a thousand samples that we found in public resources, we were able to extract around 110 different groups or thread actors that are using Phobos, right? Based on the extensions that are used by these thread actors. And uh, looking at the emails that are used to contact the thread actors, we found that some of these uh, groups have more than 100 people behind them. For example, Faust, is one of the most uh, common uh, variants of Phobos. Uh, it encrypts the file with the extension Faust, F-A-U-S-T, mm -hmm. and uh, the emails that are used to contact the actors, we found more than 100 emails uh, over time that were used to contact the thread actors. So we, we started to notice that Phobos is not a, a common it's not a common ransomware in terms of how they, they are distributed. It's not a single group that is behind it. Uh, it seems to be a malware that is sold to other groups that uh, configure the malware to its liking, for example, with ex extensions that they want. And then these groups hire other, other actors to distribute the samples. So you have two layers of, uh, of uh, services that are sold to distribute Phobos uh, in the underground, right? So that's uh, one thing that we found by analyzing all these the samples and the, the configurations inside the samples. It's a lot of uh, people behind this these campaigns, a lot of different campaigns uh, in the last five years that uh, really makes it difficult to, to track Phobos to a specific uh, group or a specific developer or who created or who managed this uh, this uh, malware. Yeah. So what are your recommendations then, based on the information that you've gathered here? How should people best protect themselves against this? The recommendations here are very common in terms of who, who, what you need to do to keep your network secure, right? Uh, li like I mentioned before, it base doesn't use anything very complex to infect their victims. And that was uh, a common uh, behavior among the different campaigns that we observed. We recommend that uh, users, that companies that have uh, remote access enabled, that they put better controls in who can access these resources or what they can do once they access the resources. Uh, we recommend that uh, credentials that uh, have been leaked or that are known to be leaked be reset and be monitored for access from uh, unknown sources, for example. So this will prevent RDP access like uh, eight base used to access these victims. Security tools that are used to, to detect uh, uncommon behavior, for example, a file that is encrypting a lot of samples, a lot of files in a user's machine, it has a, a, a sequence of events that it creates that most of the security tools in, in, in use can detect. But if the security tools are not configured properly, they will not detect, right? In, in general, just keep an eye on the security tools and, and take uh, any event that is generated by them seriously and analyze these events and see if there is nothing else behind a simple event. For example, if the if your security tool detects that uh, backups were disabled on a machine, that's a common uh, behavior from ransomware that disabled the, the backups uh, in a machine before encrypting the files. So if you see a machine that has uh, backups disabled, you need to act immediately before the encryption starts, right? Our thanks to Guilherme Venere from Cisco Talos for joining us. 
The research is titled A Deep Dive into Phobos Ransomware, recently deployed by 8Base Group. We'll have a link in the show notes. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. The Cyberwire Research Saturday podcast is a production of N2K Networks. N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Irvin with mixing by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening.